Special at-home edition of Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here. Thanks for joining us as the Seahawks had so much new news and rumors to get to that I wanted to bring you a video on my off day today. So certainly would appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel for more content that we're bringing you. Even when I'm at home on a Friday afternoon, subscribe now for free. We're getting very close to 43,000 subscribers Less than 100 away from that next milestone. We'll get started with today's show. Let's begin with the latest update from Brock Heward of uh, Seattle Sports 710, former Seahawks and Huskies quarterback, also works for a Fox as a college football analyst. Brock does an incredible job. Always been a big fan of what he does. And uh, on his radio show this week, he was talking about uh, where the Seahawks now go from here after the Frank Clark deal. If that means the Seahawks are done potentially making moves now that uh, Frank Clark is coming to town to replace Eugene and Wosu at the injury. And I found this very interesting of what Heward was saying along with his, ho his, uh, his co-host Mike Salk uh, on their radio show this week. Let me r let's read this to you here. Let's watch life without Eugene and Wosu. Let's watch a Cleveland team and a head coach, an offensive play caller, and Kevin Stefanski that knows how to scheme, knows how to run, and has some kind of that Mike Shanahan kind of background in his run game like San Francisco and the Rams. Let's see how these boys play the edge. This is going to be a big audition. It's going to be more snaps for Derek Hall, more snaps for Daryl Taylor, more opportunities for those guys. And then Heward went on to say, it doesn't preclude them from what you want, which is a six foot five, 320 pounds inside. So I got more that they said in just a moment, but kind of to put that in a nutshell, this weekend is a audition of sorts for these guys that are there to prove, hey, you know what? Do the Seahawks, are they good enough as they are? Or do they need to go ahead and make a move at the trade deadline? Just because you signed Frank Clark does not mean you're done wheeling and dealing. Now, I would expect that the Seahawks are not going to make a trade between now and Sunday. But if they don't like what they're seeing or feel that it just isn't quite good enough to get by based on this performance, a very good test, a very good sample size this weekend, then likely they could make a move before Tuesday's deadline. More to come on this and show you what they had to say coming up in just a moment, but let me ask you guys, uh, we're going to talk about Deron Payne next. Should the Seahawks trade for Deron Payne? Why for yes, in for no? Wait in the comment section, tell me what you think. So here's more of what uh, the guys at Seattle Sports had to say on this, uh, taking it a step further. Here's from Mike Salk here. This now, for me, closes the conversation at defensive end or edge rusher and opens the conversation even wider at an interior defensive lineman. There's a few names out there. Leonard Williams is one of them. That's kind of pointed out a few times just because the Giants stink. But if Washington is dealing, are you interested in Jonathan Allen? Are you interested in Deron Payne? I mean, like there are a few guys in various teams that fill kind of that same role. We've talked about Leonard Williams a lot on this program, so I'll save you time from that today. But let's take a moment to talk about Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen, each of them, piece by piece here. Uh, starting with uh, Deron Payne here. Deron Payne was a pro bowler in 2022, an all-rookie team selection back in 2018. Uh, first round draft pick back in that 2018 season from Alabama, has spent his entire career with the Washington Commanders. And I got to tell you, Deron Payne has been incredible. And if you're looking for that inside presence, last year he did things that were remarkable at that position. 11 and a half sacks uh, along with a total of 64 tackles on the season. I mean, he was, he was really good. This year his numbers have included to this point 23 tackles, one sack, and he's also had two forced fumbles and two fumble recoveries already this year. So Deron Payne would be incredible. You line him up with Jaron Reed on the inside there, and this could get nasty for this Seahawks team of just that presence they would bring inside if they add Deron Payne into the equation here. Now, let's uh, dive in about Jonathan Allen now. 
first round pick by the Commanders, also out of Alabama, where he was a two-time uh, Pro Bowler in 2021 and recently in 2022. Sounds awfully familiar, right? And uh, Jonathan Allen, let's go over his statistics for you for what he has done uh, as of late. Last season for Jonathan Allen in 2022, he had a total of 65 tackles, seven and a half sacks, as well as two forced fumbles. So far this year, he's had 28 tackles with uh, three sacks, and uh, he's also had uh, a pass defended as well. So both players are very good options for the Seattle Seahawks, potentially speaking, if you want to make that move. Now, the trade value, I think you're looking at giving up multiple picks for both these guys. I think Deron Payne, you're probably looking maybe a, a second and a fourth. Jonathan Allen, probably a little bit cheaper, probably like a second and a fifth if you want to make that move. And for those of you that are sitting here saying to yourselves, look, I like this young core. I like where the Seahawks are at and the foundation where they stand right now. My response would be, as I've continued to reiterate the last couple of weeks, and I will say once again, is that you have to think about what do we have to do to compete with San Francisco. While well, San Francisco and Philadelphia are wheeling and dealing, and they continue to build their roster and get better and better, not afraid to be aggressive and make moves, are you really going to be okay with just sitting behind them? I mean, you think about it right now, you're a half game back in the division of San Francisco. You're a game back in Philadelphia. If you want to compete with those guys, you got to compete in the arms race with those guys. So to me, that's why I'm looking at, sure, the Seahawks pass rush has been really good the last few weeks, but it can be better, and there can be more work to be done because this is a win-now mode. We've heard John Schneider and Pete Carroll say that Seahawks need to be in win-now mode, and I agree with them. So name a player the Seahawks should trade for. We talked about a couple of them on today's show, Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, Leonard Williams. There's someone else out there you'd like to see the Seahawks add prior to the trade deadline coming up on Tuesday. Chime in the comment section and let us know what you think. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks, one of our newest partners here at Chat Sports. I got to tell you, I love playing on Prize Picks. If you played Prize Picks with me last week, folks, we won on Prize Picks together. We hit, we made money, and I want to win money with you again on Prize Picks. Here's how it works download Prize Picks, create an account, and you get to pick two or more players in any given prop when it comes to yardage, receptions, pass attempts, all sorts of stuff out there. And it's not limited just the NFL either. If you want to do some college stuff, some NBA, whatever, check out Prize Picks. This week, I'm rolling with Kirk Cousins to have less than 251.5 passing yards against the Packers, and Sam Howell to have less than 237.5 passing yards against the Eagles. Come play along with me. Get a $100 deposit match when you go to pricepix.com slash CLNS. That's pricepix.com slash CLNS. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. Promo code CLNS. If you want to play along today, you'll be glad you did. All right, uh, before we get out of here, let's get some injury news for the Seahawks. Friday, the make-or-break day when it comes to the injury report. A couple notable things for Seattle. Uh, Kenny Mack and uh, Austin uh, Fallow, they will not play. They've come off the IR, and they did you know, start to make the steps in the right direction, but they're not going to play quite yet this week, both out with their knee injuries. Meanwhile, Phil Haynes with a calf injury, he is doubtful to play. So another opportunity for Anthony Bradford to step up to the plate. Uh, and then, meanwhile, uh, Tyler Lockett dealing with a hamstring injury, Jamal Adams with a knee injury. Both of those guys are questionable for Seattle. In Tyler Lockett's case, in the media portion where you could see practice, where the media got to see a little bit, Tyler Lockett was out there. Uh, so that's a positive sign. DK Metcalf expected to be back this week, so that'll be good. But with that said, with DK coming off the injury and with Tyler Lockett uncertain, you have to like the performance, what we saw from JSN and Jake Bobo this past week, and more confidence in those guys stepping up with the uncertainty surrounding 
uh, Lockett and Metcalf on that front there. So a couple things to keep in mind as far as those injury goes, but I would expect Tyler Lockett to still be able to give it a go this uh, upcoming weekend despite the uh, injury news uh, that came out today since he did uh, practice with that in mind. What's your concern level with the Tyler Lockett injury news? I'm not that concerned personally. Scale it for me one through ten. I'm putting this at maybe a, a two or a three at the moment. Scale it for me. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe now to Seahawks today, even on my off day, bringing you guys content. Help us get to our next milestone, 43,000 subscribers. I believe we can get there. I know we can. Let's do it. I'll see you coming up this weekend, our Seahawks watch party, live here on the channel. We'll see you then. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody.